Welcome to Seeds from Ahead. Are you ready for some good laughs and a good time? Woo! Yes, sir. Welcome, ladies. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome, children. Welcome, farm animals. This is Seeds from Ahead. We are Minnesota's own comedy improv show. As you can see, we have a studio full of farm animals today. Let's meet our Minnesota comic talent that will be appearing on today's episode. In chair number one, we have Mr. Jordan Rulo. In chair number two, she's not a mole, she's Karen Vol. In chair number three, she's not a dog, it's Cat Fenton. And in chair number four, say hello to Blank Chair. Oh, yeah! yeah. Woo -hoo. Yes, Woo -hoo. <laughs> That's right, it's another very special episode of Scenes from a Hat. We have our Blank Chair episode. As you know, if you've been watching this show, we tape all of these episodes in one day. So for all of our comics who were nice, and, uh, nice enough to stick around for an entire day of taping, we have tried to reward them with one final appearance in an episode and get them into our blank chairs so that they have a chance to be on TV a second time. So why don't you please welcome the first two contestants on blank chair, Miss Rebecca Ross and M.A. Dorfler. Yeah. And we're going to invite the entire cast now to play two restaurants. Everybody's going to play two restaurants. Come on up. And Mr. Jordan Rouleau is going to be our waiter. And the rest are going to be people in a restaurant. We're going to have a restaurant on the left and a restaurant on the right. All right, so on the left, we have Miss Karen and Miss Kat. What, are, what is their relationship? Lesbians. No, we're not doing that. Film, pro film producers discussing their latest project. Film producers discussing their latest project, and hopefully you can come up with some conflict there to make that scene more interesting. And in the second restaurant, we have Miss M.A. and Miss Rebecca. What are they up to? What are the Coming up with Megan Caviar Company. Interview. <laughs> caviar. Wow. Geriatric Somebody's project. got caviar on the brain over there. Okay, so you're, you're doing something with caviar. We'll just... <laughs> then maybe I don't have to hear that suggestion for the rest of the day. And what is uh, what is Jordan's quirk or or uh, layer that we can add to his waiter character? He's allergic to seafood. Friend. He's allergic to seafood. There we go. Or food I see. <laughs> All right, allergic yeah. to seafood. There we go. All right, we are going to start with the producers over there on the restaurant on the left. Take it away. All right, well, I think that our next reality TV show should be baseball players dancing you know they we could give them some dances it's not really like you know that other show that they have you know the professional dancers but the baseball players could dance like on the baseball field here's your menu yeah. oh thank Hi. you can i get drinks started for you too oh yeah uh, long island tea um just a nice water for me please. ice water any yes. anything else uh no that should that should do it okay don't Thanks. don't eat the fish though Ooh. oh Good thing I'm allergic. <coughs> <laughs> That's okay. never a good thing. So, um, you know, Pete Rose, he had that bad luck with, you know, his betting problem. I think he would make a really good dancer. So what do you think if we, you know, put him with the umpire or something? And they could do maybe something a little funky. What style of dancing do you think would be good? Order up. So I got this an, an idea. We mm -hmm. could sell caviar. Nobody's in the market for it right now. Why? We can have our monopoly. I don't know. It's a good point. But I, I mean, do re do people really eat that stuff? I see it on the shelves all the time in the stores, so I'm assuming. Nobody eats caviar anymore. <coughs> oh, oh, okay. Or seafood. I mean, here's your water. I just a heads up. I've overheard you guys, and that's a bad choice. You don't want to try it? I work in the food business. No. Okay. Okay. So, so how would we go about doing that? Well, we could first 
find the tuna and the salmon and you just kind of squeeze out the eggs. Oh, okay. And then That sounds really easy. And then we can just get those baby food jars. Yes. I have a bunch of them. Oh, and that's then, like, sweet. We can just can them. Well, yeah, I mean with seven kids I would I would So you you yeah. You know, I Order can, up. I can get a deal on those extra large toe shoes and tap shoes. So I think we've got something here. Well, no. I was thinking diamonds are a girl's best friend. Oh, and they could be dancing around the baseball diamond. Brilliant. Okay. So do you think we could get maybe Frank Viola? I know he's a little old, but maybe he could look good in a little tutu or something. I think he'd look great. You know, he was one of the best pitchers on Here's the Here's your friends. salmon. My water tastes like fish. Oh. Oh. Wait, what, did something just jump out of it? Order up. No, you cannot put your kids out on the side of the street to try to market this stuff. Why not? Kids, there are child labor laws. Kids appeal. Oh. And, and who's going to buy caviar from kids anyway? Everybody. Like they know anything about it? You don't have to know anything about it. You just look cute and sell it. You know, like lemonade. It's not like selling cookies. These aren't Girl Scouts. Yeah, but we could get the Cub Scouts to do it. Cubs mm. eat salmon. Salmon mm. make fish, make mm. eggs, caviar. Oh, I see. Okay. I just don't know what a name would be. Oh, okay. Like, um, you know, Order up. I'm serious. Diamonds are a boy's best friend would work way better in well, this situation. You're going to strike my idea? No. I mean, that's I, not really cool. I mean, I thought of diamonds are a girl's best friend, and the guys are going to be singing with their little tutus and holding out little fake diamond rings. I don't know. I think we can't come to a compromise on this. I might just walk. You know, you walk, and I'm going to end up just totally putting the money somewhere else. I'm out. Here's your squid. What do you mean you're out? We didn't order this. It, it looks disgusting. What do you mean you're out? Order up. Okay, we finally agreed on a name, the Excellent Caviar Company. I, I think that's great. It works. Yeah. And then we could have your kids market it, and then my kids just raking all the dough. And Well, your kids have to do some work too. Yeah, they'll be in the accounting. They'll count everything. They're not that bright. <laughs> so? You don't need to be that bright. Ugh, to count money? And you're dissing my kids. So what? They, they came around way before yours did. Yeah, but mine are actually good kids. Yeah, good. Her kids suck. They eat fish all the time. It's I know. Disgusting. <sighs> Order up. Okay, well, pitch me your best idea then. Okay, let's just forget about the baseball thing because most people don't like baseball. I don't understand why. Maybe we could do something with hockey or maybe we could do something with football or wrestling. Ooh, sumo wrestlers in tutus. Yes. Yes. So who do you have lined up? I don't know any sumo wrestlers. Okay, well, why don't you put a phone call into my agent and she'll get you some people that we can get a hold of. Done. Okay. Order up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to admit, my kids really are bad. Yeah. They're not They're not good. They don't listen to me. They don't do anything they're supposed to do. So that's why we have them <laughs> sell everything for us. They're not going to sell get anything no cut. for us. Well, they're not going to do anything anyway. They don't do what I tell them. Well, we could, we could force them. There's no labor laws for kids under or over 18 anymore, are there? I don't know. Let's just try it. We'll try it for a month and then split the costs 60, 40. Sure, I'll take 60. And see. Oh, good. My tongue didn't have to fall out. <laughs> okay, let's welcome the next player to occupy the blank chair. Miss Sally Ann Hunt, come on up. Yay. All right. And Sally is going to be participating with the rest of the cast in a rousing game of Quiz Show. Let's get set up for Quiz Show. Mr. Jordan is going to be the host of an imaginary quiz show. The rest of our fine players are going to be contestants on said quiz show. 
And what we are going to do now is get a fantastic quiz show name from our wonderful studio audience. Let's hear it. What name name? Name? Where did I leave my keys? Where, I like that. Yeah. Yes. Where did I leave my keys? Hosted by Mr. Jordan Rouleau. Take it away. Welcome back to another exciting game show of Where Where's Did I Leave My nice? Keys? <laughs> my name is Al. So let's turn to our contestants. <laughs> Contestant number one. Hi, my name is Belle Ching, and I am a gastroenterologist. <laughs> Contestant number two. My name is Crystal Lamp, and I sell shades. Ooh, nice. Ooh. We'll keep that. Contestant number three. I'm Penelope Colada, and I like dancing in the rain. Don't we all, Penelope? All right. <laughs> so on to the game show now. So name that where I lost my keys. I lost my glasses. Can I borrow yours? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Question number one, uh, behind the dresser is where this happened. Boop, boop. Yes, contestant number two. Um, that would be my uncle's shoes. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Oh. Do 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 do. Contestant number three. Uh, did you lose your keys there? Yes, I did. Contestant number three. Oh. <laughs> ah. All right. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Question number two. <laughs> Last Thursday, I was at the uh, ballroom, and what happened? <clears throat> contestant number one. You dropped your keys on the dance floor? Yes, I did. Congratulations, <laughs> contestant number one. <laughs> We're going into the bonus round now. Each question is worth 2,000 points. All Ooh. right. Ooh. The third Friday of every month, my cousin comes over, and he does what? Do -do 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 -do. Contestant number three. Lose your keys. Incorrect. Oh! Boop, boop, boop. Contestant number two. Uh, left the keys in the microwave. That is correct. All right. <laughs> <laughs> On to the final round. My dog, blank, and then I lost my blank. <laughs> Contestant number one. My dog barked, and then I lost my place. And that's incorrect. <laughs> Contestant number two. My dog pooped and I lost my virginity. <laughs> Very close, contestant number two. Do -do 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 -do. Contestant number three. Your dog ate and you lost your keys. That is correct. <laughs> That's all the time we have left for oh, where'd I lose my keys? <laughs> Game show seemed a little predictable. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say thanks to Sally Ann, our youngest contestant here on Scenes from the Hat. Thank you so much. All right, please welcome our next contestant to fill the blank chair. Please welcome Mr. Connor McCarthy. <laughs> Yeah, you're looking more buff than me. You're not going to be appearing on this show anymore. I can tell you that much. <laughs> All right, so Connor's going to participate with the rest of the cast in a game called Let's Make a Date. So why don't we get set up for that? Karen, you are going to be our contestant on oh, Let's Make heavens. a Date. You're going to have to guess what these three weird dating show contestants are that are appearing on this program with you. So that these cards actually work. <laughs> We're so high tech here on this show. <laughs> um, All right. So Karen is appearing on a dating show and we're going to go a couple of rounds with questions that she's going to ask her potential suitors and then she's going to at the end of that try and guess who or what they are. So Karen you go ahead and take it away. Bachelor number one, if you were going to take me to the zoo, which animal exhibit would we visit? Well, I can tell you one thing, we're not going to see the horses or, well, I, I'm used to calling them knights, but <laughs> God, the last one I saw just really knocked me out. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 
okay, bachelorette number two. Um, if we were going to go to the ice cream shop, what <coughs> flavor would you buy? Um, well, you know, I don't care if you turn left. I mean, I, I really don't care where you go. Um, you know, you could hit a curb. I don't care. Um, maybe strawberry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bachelor number three. I like taking long walks down the street. What's your favorite street? out and get me drunk what drink would you buy me oh so I see so so you think because you're the queen you can go anywhere you want <laughs> well I'll tell you I can only go one way or the other hmm. <laughs> bachelorette number two um, if we went on a car date, what kind of car would you pick me up in? Well, it really doesn't matter what car, and it doesn't matter how which way you go. Um, you know, if even if you parallel parked and you hit somebody, I, I really wouldn't mark any points off of that. So, um, <laughs> you know, I really don't care. Um, maybe we just go to the drive-in and make out. <laughs> <laughs> Bachelor number three, if you were going to buy me a pet, what kind of pet would it be? Bachelor number one. Are you a jouster? <coughs> kind of close. Queen can move anywhere. Oh, um, you are a chess piece. Yeah, there we go. Chess champion, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about uh, bachelorette number two? Oh, are you a driver's ed instructor? Indeed. Yeah! Very good. Yay! Inattentive one at that. <laughs> And uh, I bet you it's a real stretch to figure out who <laughs> bachelor number three is. Could it be a hamster? <laughs> Doing what specifically? Running on a hamster wheel. Yes. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. Do I get to pick one? <laughs> All right. Thank you to Mr. Connor McCarthy for being part of that. Oh, was a mouse. Okay. All right, please welcome the next player who will <laughs> occupy our wonderful, beautiful, stupendous blank chair, Miss Lauren Kincaid! <laughs> All right, Lauren is going to be involved in a game called Strange Newscasters, so why don't we get set up for that? Strange Newscasters, how about we have Jordan as our anchor? Karen as our expert, and Kat is our reporter in the field, who will be interviewing Lauren, who will be playing a couple of different people over the course of this game. But first of all, we need a something to report on, usually a nursery rhyme or some sort of story goes well for this. Rockabye baby. All right, so here we go. This is the Rockabye baby 6 o'clock news report. Take it away.
And welcome back to On the Tree Top News today. I'm Wong Dong, followed by my assistant. Anita Whoopin. <laughs> <laughs> nice, to, nice to meet you, Anita. <laughs> so today out in the field, we're talking about uh, a good old classic, Rockabye Baby. Out to you. Uh, yes, this is Lena Over, and I am here with one of the witnesses here. It's about the Rockabye Baby and uh, something in the treetop. Uh, and here is one of our witnesses, and this is Humpty Dumpty. Oh, uh, Humpty Dumpty, it's very nice to meet you. Humpty Dumpty, can you tell me what happened here with the rockabye baby in the tree? I heard a lot of wind, and then people screamed something about baby. And that's where I am. I myself fell off the wall, and as you see, I need help too. Yeah, you're a little cracked up. They only care up. about the baby, though. Yeah, you're a little cracked up here. So, um, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, okay, so no one really witnessed this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to you, and let's talk to that expert and see uh, if I can wrestle up another witness. I back wonder to who you. put her back together. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Sounds like a real problem these days. Uh, I've heard that uh, a lot of wind is created when politicians are speaking. <laughs> They're full of wind, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, there are always babies around to kiss, and <laughs> I imagine many of them will be... Never kissed a baby. Well, are mm. you a politician? No, I just don't like babies. Oh. It's weird. They scare me. <laughs> I never was one. Born five years old. That's incredible. Cool fact. Mm. <laughs> Back to you. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, Lena, over back here. Uh, I've got I've got another witness here about the baby in the treetop. I'm not sure if the cradle did fall. Uh, here is another witness. Can you tell me your name, please? Hi, I'm this nosy neighbor. Nosy neighbor. That's yeah. great. So, what did you what did you see? Well, I heard um, the the cradle wind. And then I have a question. Maybe you need to send it back to the studio. I'm not sure. But the bow breaks, right? Broke. And I, what, does the cradle have a bow? Well, I think. A bow? Well, I think whoever wrote the uh, A bow, rhyme, that's what I heard. I think Can you little... ask the studio, please? Obviously, um, you don't know anything. Okay, all right, well. <laughs> Okay, uh, back to you. Nosy neighbor um, is thinking yeah. that this this nursery rhyme may be a little sadistic. So, um, what is a bow? Yeah, she wants to know what a bow is. Back to you. You know, uh, to be honest, I do believe I know exactly who you're talking to, and she's very nosy, but she gets the story all misconstrued. Oh, I know your voice too. I know what you did. Yeah, last I remember Sunday. you, nosy. Last Peeping Sunday. in my windows. Oh. Okay, and thank you for tuning in Curtains to the news. Weren't uh, we'll be reporting back later about the bowel breaking. All right, please welcome our next comedian to fill the blank chair. It is Mr. Victor Littlejohn. Mr. Victor Littlejohn will be participating with Mr. Jordan Rouleau in a wonderful game of Changing Lines. This is where we have two contestants enacting a simple scene, but when I say change, they will change the last line that they spoke to something a little bit more funny and amusing and just raising the stakes and making this episode absolutely the finest piece of comedy that you have seen in your entire lives. He's not setting the bar too high, is he? <laughs> I hope not. Change. I hope so. I so really let's hope. give them a simple scene. What are they doing? Where are they at? Thrift shopping. What? Oh, thrift shopping. That's a good one. All right, so your thrift store shopping, changing lines, take it away. Oh, Jerry. I found this great little thrift shop. It's right over there. Um, remember when you were telling me you needed a new lamp? Yeah, but I already bought one. So Change. Yeah, but I like yours a lot. Change. I was, you know, I just burned down my house. I don't need a lamp. Oh, so, you, so you're out on the streets. Yeah, it's been tough out there. Well, then you really need a thrift shop. Change. 
Well, then, are you going to panhandle? Change. Well, you know, being out on the street isn't always so bad. Change. Um, being out on the street sucks. <laughs> uh, you really need to find a new house. I can help you with that. You can. Absolutely. Are there places nearby, or is it, like, out of the zip code? Oh, no. It's somewhere very local, easy to, you know, very affordable. Change. It's someplace in across town. Change. It's someplace downtown. Change. It's someplace underground. And <laughs> Sounds like know, hell. No, no, it's not quite that far. Not, okay. not quite that far. No. I and burn the, easy. I burn I easy. I understand. <laughs> yeah, well, with that, you know, with that I mean, skin. Yeah, the, the come skin. On. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I don't stand a the devil won't be your landlord for Change. sure. Change. You could possibly meet Satan himself. Change. You know, it's pretty close to underground but the coal miner's daughter took it just before you yeah <laughs> so you just missed out sorry about that you know it's 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 been tough out there i mean i got my foot ran over last week change i got my foot sawed off last week change i almost ran into a bus <laughs> you, a bus yeah you know if you let it happen you could have sued the city that's why I almost ran into a bus oh you were running into <laughs> yeah, the bus yeah. i, I almost yeah, right, like i right. scared myself last moment like <sighs> oh change Last moment, I was like, nope. Change. Last moment, I was like, hi, mom. Change. Last moment, I was like, change. 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 And I missed the bus. And you missed the bus. <laughs> Thank you. See you. Woo! All right. Let's get uh, Karen and Victor down. Karen and Victor for changing lines. <clears throat> And what is their simple scene that they are flying enacting? What? Flying a kite. Flying a kite. All right, you're flying a kite. Changing lines, take it away. Hi, I just got this great new kite, and it's better than the one you're flying already. Let that go. <laughs> <laughs> no! Um, and keep it away from mine, because we're going to get all tangled up. Change. I would love to get my kite tangled up with yours. Change. Oh, watch it go down. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm going to get my kite up since yours went down. Now, see how beautiful it is? Change. Now, see how high it is? Way Change. Up? Now, see how it darts from side to side like that? That's Change. What, see how it's going straight down into the ground? <laughs> That's what yours did. <laughs> is that a feature? Yeah, well, yeah, you just push the button here on the, on the handle. Change. Uh, yeah, um, you gotta ask the guy at the store and he'll give you the flip floppy. Change. Uh, if you get a kite with no tail, change. If you get a kite with a super long tail, change. If you get a kite from Walmart, <laughs> <laughs> it'll do that all the time. Oh, I got mine at Sears. Yeah, see, you got a good kite. You don't want to get that kind. Oh. They're no fun. They're just no fun. Oh, man. Where are I you thinking maybe you'll buy a kite next time? <sighs> Well, Walmart. Of course. Of course. Walmart's the place to get a kite. Yeah. You know? And you got always buy always buy the green one. Change. Always buy the one with a picture of Obama on it. Change. Always <laughs> buy from the guy with the red hair. He he knows the kites. So he's a kite expert. How much should I spend to get a really good one? Change. Oh. Um should I steal one to get a best one? Change. Um I've got a million dollars. Which one should I get? You can get any kite you want with a million dollars, but it's probably better to just steal one. Well, what kind do you have? A stolen one. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> All right, no comic left behind. Cat, come on down and join Victor for our final round here of Changing Lines. What is their simple scene? Um, a convention. What kind of convention? Gaming convention. A gaming convention. All right. Victor and Kat at a gaming convention that seems so just absolutely 100% believable. <laughs> Take it away. Did you hear they got a new uh, new version of uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse coming out? Well, I was looking at the Deadpool one. Change. I was looking at the Star Trek one. Change. I was looking at the ra uh, Ransom one. Change. I was looking at yours. <laughs> oh, so you heard of mine. I did. Yeah, that's the Raggedy Ann and Andy um game that sounds pretty cool what what do they do does raggedy ann and andy do they make out or they do anything oh no fun no they, no it's do this they game have swords is, or oh no no nothing like that at all this game is very child friendly change oh. 
This game is not suited for all players. Change. This game actually needs a group of people to decide what Raggedy Ann and Andy are going to do before the game can actually be played. Change. This game is just stupid. You don't want to. It <laughs> sounds complicated. I, yeah. I don't think I want to play that one. I really want to play the one, though, with Batman. Change. I want to play the one with Tarzan. Change. With Robin Hood. Robin Hood, he's one of my favorite characters. Oh, you know, I, know. I love the way he steals from the rich and gives to the poor. I love, Change. I love the way he steals from the rich and keeps it for himself. Change. I love the way Robin Hood wears those tights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're pretty hot, aren't they? Oh, gosh, man. And the Kevin Costner version's the best. But I heard there's a new one coming out. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, it stars some guy with a much better butt. Change. Uh, it stars some guy who's much taller and doesn't know how to shoot a bow. Change. <laughs> it stars some guy who uh, they just picked up off the street, but he knows how to steal very well. Oh, is he homeless? Oh, not anymore. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Victor Littlejohn. Give it up for him, everybody. Yeah. All right, and yet another occupier of the blank chair. Please say hello to the one, the only, Benjamin Man. Yeah. All right. And we are going to play a game of courtroom. We're going to play a game of courtroom. And Mr. Rouleau, you are going to be the judge of our courtroom. And Mr. Ben, you are going to be our prosecuting attorney. And Karen, and Kat, you will be cycling in as witnesses for the prosecution. But before we can play this game, we need an imaginary court case to, to try here. The case of the stolen what, anybody? Oh. Thank underwear. you. Virginity. Newspaper. Ooh, underwear. That's Newspaper. Underwear. You know what? We finally got a suggestion that we haven't done in this episode yet. The case of the stolen newspaper. Jordan Rouleau, Judge, the Honorable Judge Jordan Rouleau presiding with his little gavel there. We also have Benjamin Manthe as our prosecutor, and we have Kat and Karen will be rotating in as witnesses. Take it away. Now presenting case of the stolen newspaper. That's right, Your Honor. This is the case of the stolen newspaper. I'd like to swear in my first witness. You're sworn in. Come forward, please. State your name for the record. Ann Teeter. And Mrs. Ann Eater. Ann. Ann Teeter. Ann Teeter, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and fib a little bit if it so suits you? Of, of course I do. Excellent. Now, <clears throat> are you aware of the fact that uh, a newspaper was stolen from uh, my mailbox on the 14th of October at approximately 2 in the morning? Oh, no, was it? Yes. Are you also aware that we have security footage of you going by eating ants and uh, using the TV guide section as a straw? Oh no, do you? Sustained. Okay, next witness. <laughs> State your name for the record, please, ma'am. Sandy Beaches, and I'm a lifeguard. Ms. Beaches, do you swear to uh, follow my lead and uh, repeat everything I say and agree with all statements here, forthwith, and forever and ever? I do. <laughs> Excellent. I think. Now, Mrs. Beaches. Um, it's Ms. Beaches. I'm not married. Ms. Beaches. You want to you meet up afterwards? This is, you know. Order in the court. Uh, order in the court. Of course, of course. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> Ms. Beaches. Have you seen the footage of Ms. Uh, Ant Eater going past my mailbox stealing my, my, my uh, uh, newspaper? That's it. Um, yes, and I would like to meet up with you later. All right. Oh. <laughs> You're on thin ice, lady. <laughs> okay, Your Honor. I'm sorry. May um, I depose this witness in private, please? <laughs> Overruled. Oh, damn it. Anyway. <clears throat> I would like to uh, to uh, have in, uh, brought into uh, 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 evidence the uh, uh, fingerprints of Ms. Ant Eater, if I may call her back. You may step down. Thank you. I'll see you later. I'll catch you later. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to call me back, you better call me by my name, Ann. 
and Peter. Aunt Peter, come on, let's go. <coughs> we ain't got all day. Now, as you can see, Your Honor, these are the claw marks that were found on my mailbox. It's got to be her. And plus, if you look back here, she's got the, the funny paper stuffed down her pants. Let's see it. Let's see it. Uh-huh. There we go. I would like to enter this in the object. That Are you looking at my butt? Yes. Now let's see a paper. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Dismissed. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Are we ready? On the blank chair, please welcome Mr. Merritt West. Yay. All right, Merritt West is going to be performing with the rest of the cast in a rousing game of Foreign Film Dub. Everybody, Yay. come on now. All right, let's get, uh, how about Merritt and Jordan? Why don't you guys act this out here, the Brothers Grimm and uh, the Sisters Grimmer will translate. Kat, you'll translate for Merritt, and Karen, you will translate for Jordan. Okay, we need two things from the studio audience. First of all, we need a foreign language. Germans. Japanese. I like Japanese. There we go, Japanese. And what is the Japanese blockbuster film that we're watching? Tsunami on the front. Tsunami where? Tsunami on the front. What? What's, what was yours? No tsunami left behind. There, I'm going to combine those two suggestions. No tsunami left behind. The Japanese version that Michael Bay will slaughter later. Take it away. What are you looking at? Oh, can get this guy. That cute chick over there. That's my mom. Oh, and Oh, yeah, you know, you could just go over to her, just like what the caveman did, say you're mine, hit her over the head with her club, and bring her back here. But she's my mom. It doesn't matter, does it? Do you see that wave behind you? Well, I didn't bring my surfboard. It's a tsunami. Well, we shouldn't leave it behind, should we? You idiot. Itchy neep. Hey, Scotty Hawk. Bite me. <laughs> All right, switch it up. Switch oh it up. Gosh. All right, so now we need a new foreign language. Spanish. 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 What's, what's the new title of our Spanish film? Don't the girl who left me. Don't forget the sombrero. Tacos. And those that love them. Don't forget the sombrero. <laughs> Taco Tuesday. Don't, don't forget the sombrero on Taco Tuesday. That's the name of our film. Translated by Jordan and Merritt and acted out by Karen and Kat. Take it away. Si, senorita, margarita. How are Ole. you today? <laughs> How are you doing today? Hola, enchilada. My shin. Oh, my shin. Oh. Oh, we we see. Well, I don't know very much uh, Spanish, but okay. Ula ula la la. <laughs> Have a taco. <laughs> taco frajita. No, no. Do you want this taco to give me gas? <laughs> Ooh, 
Ah, uh, si, Senorita Margarita Sangria. Mmm. I don't get gas from tacos. Jimmy Chanka. Take it back, my knee still hurts. Mmm. Well, 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 Oh, I got a big one brewing now. Uh. True. Uh, uh, si, si, toro, toro, bull. Come after me, you like red. Why are you still holding that? Pew, pew, pita. I'm milking it for all it's worth. <laughs> uh, tostada, enchilada, chimichanga. Let's go find some guys. <laughs> I'd like to thank our sponsors for this episode of Scenes from a Hat. Gotta get a t-shirt.com for all your t-shirt and apparel needs. And also Princess Cheesecake. Oh, a very enthusiastic supporter of that site is also in the audience today. And also Princess Cheesecake for supplying our lunch with some great treats. Thank you so much for supporting Scenes from a Hat. Yay! That's all the time we have here on Scenes from a Hat. We hope you enjoyed this very special episode. I'm Nathan. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye!